Hello everybody and welcome to Sword Art Online Analyzation War of Underworld episode 22 anime review. Uh, we're out of the thick of it now, I think it's fair to say we are firmly in epilogue territory. Like obviously we've still got some things to work out, but I think we're firmly, everything's going to work out okay. It's basically where I'm at now. Um, it, was, it was a solid epilogue episode seeing exactly what happened to Kirito, how much he changed, like 200 year Kirito and how it's slightly different. We'll, we'll get to that when we get to it. A lot of interesting stuff. Also, apparently Kirito was the king of the underworld, it turns out. Is what it seemed like, like him and Asuna were rulers of the underworld, which... Yeah, I'll believe that. That makes a lot of sense, I'm gonna be completely honest. Um, yeah, it was it was pretty solid. I, I enjoyed it. I'm at the point now where they, they can do no wrong in my eyes, and maybe that's a bad thing, but hey, whatever. Let's get into the episode, see exactly how it all went down, and do this thing. We begin not where we left off last week, instead we have Rinko introducing Alice to the public, which is pretty wild. She's got a robot body, presumably. Uh, I don't think they really said, but I'm going to assume she has a robot body. A very realistic robot body that apparently can make children. It, one of the things she was saying, I was like, yeah, eventually you can make babies with it. But I was like, hang on, how, how? Have you stuck a working bit of parts on that thing? I'm asking the real questions here about how this works. Um, all the characters are watching Egg Eels, all the main characters, except of course Kirito and Asuna, because they're still sort of in the, uh, in the machine. Uh, they want, she wanted the same uniform, she was like, I want the same uniform as the real world warriors, so she, they just got her the, uh, the Kirito's school uniform, which, or not Kirito's, you know, his school uniform, but the girl version, which is kind of funny. I thought it was quite funny anyway. Anyway, lots of questions from the press, if you've ever seen a press event. Uh, it, it was like this, really. So yeah, all the, all the, uh, reporters are assholes, is essentially how it works. They're not assholes, but you get what I'm saying. Uh, Rinko basically is like, yes, yeah, she's basically human. This dude is like, let's crack her skull open and have a look. And then she's like, I'm cool with that as long as I can crack your skull open and have a look. And it's like, is that a threat? That could be perceived as a threat. That's the thing you very much do not want to be doing right now. But hey, whatever, it works, I get. Uh, can't be mass produced, so they're not going to be made into a labor force, you know, getting rid of all the jobs of the, uh, you know, lower people, what do you call them? Unskilled work? I don't like calling it that, because unskilled work, I mean, there's absolutely skill to it, I'm just, you know, I don't like that, that term, personally. Um, some woman says, like, no, they're too different, we can't accept them equal human rights, that's no, and I'm like, I get that's the whole premise, like obviously these people, it's kind of weird because this whole time we've been seeing it through like Kirito's point of view or whatever in the underbone and we know, hey, they're the same as people. But then all these randoms, they're just like, that's an AI. And it's like, nope, that's a person, my dude. What are you doing? Um, she's all, she talks about, hey, uh, what if the real world was also a creation and your rulers came? I think Bakuli said that originally and she's quoting him. She says, yeah, I've met loads of real worlders. They're my friends. I even love a real world, and I'm like, ah, that's a Kirito, I get that one. Um, and everything, and they, they start, like, pondering, they're like, you know, yeah, okay, maybe she has a point. Some of them, at least. She's like, hey, I won't beg you to accept me, but I'll like, extend my hand, because, because I'm human, damn it. And it's like, come on, come on, reporters, you gotta at least understand a little bit. I get, I mean, it's the whole argument, I can't wait to have this argument in the real world, where they're like, should AI be people when they get to a certain point? Because that's definitely the way it's going to head if if things continue. And it's going to be like, I've seen this show. I've seen this show a million times. Normally, it goes, you know, the way of, like, Terminator. Let's not go the way of Terminator, please, world. That would be... That would be dandy. The news also talks briefly about the raid on the ocean turtle and everything. Turns out Kikuoka died. He was the he died from his injuries. Very sad. And I was like, ah, oh, I was a bit gutted, you know. I was like, oh, man, I hope you get a best set. No, he's fine. He's still alive. He's in like a Hawaiian shirt as he often is. He's completely fine. I guess he faked his death to get out of trouble or something. Not too sure, but hey, it worked out, I guess. You're free to do whatever you want now. Don't need to make them into autonomous weapons because as long as their enemies know, you know, know they can do it, that, that should be enough to scare them off, hopefully. Don't need to actually do it. Uh, and then they're like, we have them to thank for achieving our goal. And it shows Kirito and Asuna still in the machine, so that's not good. But then... 
brain activity starts going off, and that's like, huh, that's a thing. Rinko, back at the, the press release, I guess, says, hey, please interact with them in the real world. So I guess they're not the real world, the virtual world. So I guess they're going to somehow connect the, the underworld to the rest of the seed, maybe so the converting is really easy. Oh, I'd love to see, like, under, like ALO Renly. That would be cool, you know? Maybe I'm wrong on that, but that would be cool. I will say that much. Um, then one person asked the question, like, will they attempt world domination? Because that's the way it always goes in the movies. And I'm like, kid, you're going to base everything off movies? Like, I know it's a piece of entertainment. We shouldn't be saying that. But, like, I mean, that's how it's going to go, isn't it? When the in real world, when the AI conversation comes up, it's like, well, in Terminator, this happened. It's like, okay, we'll make it not like Terminator. You know, you can't base everything off Terminator. Um, but yeah, it is an interesting conversation that people that are paid way more than me, uh, are, are, you know, they're paid to talk about it and everything. Uh, and basically they say, hey, they'll only attack us if we attack first. So let's not attack them, okay? Okay. Alice is like, she, she senses a disturbance in the force, basically, and is like, I must go, my planet needs me. No idea how she knew, uh, I'm just going to say incarnation. I know it doesn't make sense at this point, but everything's incarnation, so why can't this be as well? Kirito wakes up in the Meg Bay, Alice is there when he wakes up, which is kind of weird. Weird they didn't show any Asuna waking up, you'd think they'd show her as well, but whatever, I guess, maybe she woke up a bit later. Kirito wakes up, tells Alice, hey, Selka is in a deep freeze at the of the cathedral tower so you can go see her eventually uh which i think is gonna happen but it is a bit like oh okay so only most of their friends all died you know uh selka lives she just slept at the thing that's that's great you know um yeah it is a bit like when you realize that yeah they probably had to watch all their friends die it's no wonder that they became a little bit well we see 200 year kirito later on he's a he's a bit of a different man than he was well regular kirito uh, but then tells Higa, okay, delete the 200 years of memories. I guess that makes sense, because, I mean, he, at that point as well, he's got this dead look in his eye, he's jaded, you know, his soul is on the brink of collapse. Delete the 200 years of memories, so he goes back to normal, basically. Because he says, me and the Queen's ro roles are done, you know. So I guess him and Asuna, again, ruled the underworld, which, yeah, okay, Kirito's already, you know, this is already power fantasy enough, might as well make him rule the world as well technically you know it's it's at this point that i'm like okay they sort of know what they are they they know what kirito is they're just going full ham on it at this point which i'm okay with but the thing is he doesn't remember any of that now so i guess not to confuse the timeline too much but what do i know not a lot is the answer to that kirito's been moved to a hospital asana greets him in hospital and everything she brought blue roses which is a nice touch there i assume that's gonna be like a thing now uh, got to celebrate when he's out and everything. Good stuff there. He remembers what is. He remembers them returning to meet their friends in the underworld. He remembers peace being between the the underworld, the human empire, and the dark territory. Him and him and Ishkan like bro fisted as as they should, um, and that's where his memories go away. And he starts crying because of course he does. Yujiro says, "Stay cool" and all that, and it's like, oh, "I hear my friend. Stay cool, Kirito." Uh, and then what does Asnes? Asnes is something along the lines of. Hey, the memory, memory might be forgotten, but it's not gone, you know? It's it's still in there deep inside, which, hey, like that too. Kikuoka shows up and basically says, okay, we're not done yet, boys. So Wrath is going to be closed down, basically, and all the light cubes and Alice might be seized by the government to use for who knows what. So they're in kind of a bit of trouble. Uh, he doesn't have a plan, he has a hope. His hope is that the public perception of the artificial flight light, that people will be like, hey, they're human too, so that you know, the, the government can't just do that because everyone will kick up a fuss, you know. That's basically how what they're thinking, I think. Um, which they set in motion with the, hey, please interact with them in the virtual world. Of course, they got to make a way for them to interact with them in the virtual world first. But, uh, yeah, they're going to use the seed to do that somehow, which makes sense, I think. Uh, converting two and four. Maybe they'll have a separate space. I just want to see the underworld people go to, uh, like, ALO and that. Although, at this point... You know, in the timeline, all the people we know would be dead. Except the Integrity Knights live forever, right? So I guess they'd be fine, although Administrator reset them. So maybe they wouldn't be fine. So maybe everyone we know would be dead at this point. So maybe there's no point. Except Selka, obviously. Alice and Selka are the, are the two. So, 
Oh man, that's that's like a depressing. The one that Kirito wanted his memories erased. Uh, and Kirito says, "Hey, please protect the underworld," and he's all like, "I got it, Kirito. You know, that's my that's something I've died to protect too." They like have a bonding moment, I guess, and he's like, "I'll I'll do that." And then things get things get a little weird. Didn't see this coming. So we then go to Higa in his secret base, or his mother's basement, whichever, you know, you decide to pick. So Higa made a copy of clo of 200-year-old Kirito into a light cube, so he has a second Kirito at this point. And then he boots up, and it's like, you're the oldest person alive, technically. And I'm like, oh my god, he's right. Uh, he couldn't delete him, he just couldn't do it. Kirito expected this might happen, him and Asuna discussed this. Uh, what to do if one or the other was deleted, or both of them were, you know, alive. Uh, basically, what Kirito was, if I'm the only one left, I'm going to protect the underworld, and only the underworld. I'm like, oh my god, is Kirito going to lead? Like, is Kirito going to be Skynet, basically, is where I was at? Uh, maybe not. Uh, so he, he's like, it needs the real world to survive. It can survive five years on the, the, the generator at the moment. So that's what we got so far. We need Kayaba to help us. So they're going to get... 200 year old Kirito and Kayaba's uh, copy, you know, AI ghost, whatever you want to call it. They're going to get them to meet somehow. And Higa's like, I'll call in some people, I'll see if we can find him. And like, he's literally a, he's literally a virtual ghost. What, how are you going to find that? I don't, I guess you could trace where he's been. Like, maybe look at the robot. Where did the robot go? Why did the robot disappear? Why did Perthius disappear? Visago, they, none of this stuff is explained explained at all like I, I guess we still do have another episode but how would he have gotten off the, the boat it doesn't make doesn't make sense I have no idea at this point I, I genuinely don't know what the hell they're gonna do did he just did they disintegrate who knows I most certainly do not at this point I'm just confused we're not quite done yet we go back to regular old Kirito instead of poor 200 years poor cool Kirito now nah, we're gonna go to regular Kirito. Not nearly as cool or jaded or deep voiced. Sounded dead to the world honestly. That 200 years couldn't have been easy. So real Kirito gets home and goes to sleep and what does he dream of? He dreams of your boy, dreams of Yu-Gi-Oh and it's very sad. He has a big old cry, says I should have had them delete all the memories so that I wouldn't feel so sad basically. I'm like oh Kirito no those memories are wor they're worth more than life itself and everything. Sugu shows up and is like, Kirito, tell me everything. Everything that happened in that in that world. And he proceeds telling the story, basically. He's like, well, when I first met him, he was a woodcutter. Believe it or not, they were cutting down this tree. They're going to be up all night, Kirito telling the story. He's going to be like, by then he's like, and then what happened is I got two swords. And it was awesome, right? Because I, I cut her arm off. It went, blood was everywhere. It was, it was awful, Sugu. You should have been there. And Sugu's like, mate, I got pulled through the eye. Tell me about it. They're just going to bond over all the blood they've seen. Um, but yeah, no, after that, Ali we got to Alice, who was at a party, like one of them business parties. The party, the parties that someone like Alice wouldn't want to be at, basically. And she just wants to see Kirito. She's all like, Kirito, looking out the window. And then the next morning, Kirito's phone is going off. He's getting a call from Rinko. My guess is Alice ran away and Kirito's going to hide her. Or something. I have no idea. I don't know how you'd hide her from the government. But something like that I think is going to happen. I could be wrong. Or maybe Rinko's going to be like, yeah, she, she wants to stay with you. So here's your new roommate, I guess. Something like that, maybe. I have literally no idea. I guess Higa could pass as her dad. He's blonde. That's, that's the most I got about that. Maybe it's to do with AI Kirito. Who knows, though? Higa seems to definitely be working alone because he wasn't supposed to copy Kirito. But anyway, yeah, that was the end of the episode. It was a, it was a very, I mean, it was an epilogue episode, but it was, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed seeing sort of where everything's going to go. I mean, you sort of predict the AI arguments that the press had or everything, but hey, those are arguments that are going to be made eventually in real life, and I look forward to that day. It'll be exciting. Just play the clip. Just play the, play the clip they used in this show as an answer. Just have a TV next to the research and be like, watch this, then ask any questions. Um... So yeah, I think, I think that'd be good. But anyway, what was my favourite part of the episode? It's a, not an easy question to ask, considering it wasn't heavily action-based or anything, but I still do have a favourite part, obviously. So my favourite part of the episode, sort of not a theme, but it shows up multiple points, it's just old man Kirito. 
I like that he sounds different. I like that he sounds dead, basically. He's just so, not emotionless, but he's like, he's seen some stuff, basically. And he is fed up. And it makes sense he'd want to be deleted, but he doesn't get deleted. Both, uh, you know, when he first wakes up, and then uh, as a light cube later on. 200-year-old Kirito. I'd be just making him a separate character. Can we get Kirito versus Kirito? I mean, technically, I guess we could. But uh, it's weird, because... Um, it's like whatever he says. He says at one point he's like, "It wouldn't be happy knowing it's a copy." But like Cube Kirito definitely knows he's a copy, and it's perfect. I mean, I guess because he thought this might happen, so he guess it's not so much of a shock as you know if it was unaware. I guess if, he, if they'd copied like uh, just some random character, I don't know. Puh. Are we gonna get? No, they didn't copy him. I still don't know what happened to Puh. Like. Why did he disappear? I'll have to... If he doesn't show up next week, I'm going to have to read the light novel and be like, what happened? I need to know. Uh, but no. I enjoyed this episode. I'm enjoying every, every episode, as I said. I'm too big a fanboy to, to pick out major flaws. But I, I, I liked it. It was good. Anyway. Thank you for watching this review. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please consider subscribing and stuff. For more reviews, that would help me out a ton. I will see you next week for what I believe is the season finale of this. Take care, and bye guys.